Hi, my name is Matthew with EVGA. In today's how-to video, we're gonna talk about properly installing your power supply, which is one of the most important components in any system build. Most of our EVGA power supplies will be fully modular power supplies, which means you only need to plug in the cables that are needed for your specific build. Some of our other power supply models will be semi-modular as well as non-modular. For this specific how-to, we will be using the 1600T2, which is a full modular power supply. Some of our EVGA power supplies will feature eco mode. This feature will allow the fan to turn on only when the power supply reaches 50% load or higher. This feature can be turned off or on by this switch here. The first cable to install on your new power supply will be the motherboard cable. This is because we will test the power supply before fully installing it into the system. On this specific model, the motherboard cable that plugs into the power supply modular port will be two-sided. To install the motherboard cable, line up the cable with the modular port on the power supply and press in until the locking notch on the power supply meets the modular port. With the power switch off, which would be circled down, we can then use our power supply tester piece that came with the power supply. This will connect directly to your 24 pin connector in order to test the power supply before install. All you wanna do is line up, just like you did with the power supply, and then the connection is closed. We can then plug in the AC cable to the power supply and turn the power supply on. The fan's running, that's a good sign. That means that we do have an operational power supply that is receiving and giving out power. We do have eco mode off currently, that's why the fan's running. The power supply obviously is not under 50% load. If I go ahead and turn the eco mode on now, you can see that the fan becomes completely disabled and there's no sound at all. The second cable to install after the motherboard cable will be the CPU cable. This will be a solid eight pin to two four pins. Line it up just like you did with the previous cable until it clicks into place into the modular port and you're good to go. There's two different VGA connection types. One will be your eight pin, which is usually a standardized six plus two, and then there will be a single six pin for PCI power. With most of our EVGA power supplies, we do include two different styles of the VGA cables. One will be the solid eight pin to the six plus two, and this is a single cable. The other option would be a solid eight to a six plus two with a supplementary six pin as well. This can all be used to power one single card. First cable we're gonna install will be our motherboard 24 pin. May require just a tiny bit of force, but once you get it flush with the connector, it's definitely installed. Second connection we're gonna make will be the eight pin CPU connection. This is made by two separate four pin connections. On this particular motherboard, it does have two eight pin connections. However, only one eight pin connection is needed at this time. You're gonna line that up with the connection. And there you have it. For your graphics card power, we're gonna be using this connection type here. This is a six pin plus two to create the eight pin, as well as the supplementary six pin for the power of the card. Connecting this two pin to the six pin to create the eight pin is pretty self-explanatory. There will be a little notch on the actual connector, the base of the connector, and it just fits together like that to create the eight pin. We're gonna first install the eight pin here into the card, and then we'll bring around the six pin and install that second. Alternatively, you can use two separate cables to power the GPU. You would connect again the two pin to make the eight pin. And then for the six pin connection, you can simply pull apart the two pin off of this six pin connection and plug that into the card as well. Other connection types that are available on your power supply will be a SATA connection, which is a long flat connection with a small notch at the end. This is usually used for hard drives, SSDs, optical drives. The other ones you would have would be a female four pin, which is known as a Molex. This would be for things like fan controllers or LED lighting. Again, the SATA power connection will be a long flat connection with one notch at one end. This will line up only one way with SSDs, optical drives, and hard drives for power. Simply line it up, a little bit of firm pressure, and then you have power. 
Now that you have the basic setup started, you will still need to install memory as well as a CPU heatsink. I like to set up the system like this outside of the case just to ensure that all components are in working order and receiving proper power. Traditionally, there are two different ways of mounting the power supply inside your case. One would be with the fan up, the other would be with the fan down. Mounting your power supply with the fan up will have benefits as well as drawbacks. One of the big benefits is that it'll pull warm ambient air from inside of your case and out of the exhaust. The downside of this would be that the power supply may run a bit hotter than if it was pulling air from outside the case. Mounting the power supply with the fan down will allow cooler air to cool the components inside the power supply and exhaust out the back. You wanna make sure when you're mounting fan down in a case that your case does come equipped with either a grill or a filter at the bottom to allow cool air from underneath the case into the power supply. With our G2, P2, and T2 power supplies, we also offer you the option to purchase individually sleeved cable sets. These sets come in black, red, white, and blue. The benefits of using individually sleeved cables is that it gives you a little bit extra flair in the aesthetic of your build, as well as better cable management. Thank you for watching this EVGA how-to video on proper installation and testing of your power supply. If you are in the market for an EVGA power supply but are not sure which model to purchase, please visit evga.com forward slash power dash meter.